Welcome to a new daily top ask reddit video. Today's topic. What is the most unforgettable reddit post that everyone needs to read? The lazy military officer who turned the ship so he could eat a bagel without the sun in his eyes. Can somebody provide a link to this beauty? https www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash ask reddit forward slash comments forward slash 1 rgpdf. I will never not read this story when it's linked. One of my favorites from years ago. Carbon monoxide story. Holy shit. That guy literally saved his life. This is the kind of gold I was hoping for. Someone made a post about how they purposely like to block speeding cars and drive slow to make them mad, and a tree arborist gave probably one of the best responses I've ever read and has stuck with me. HTTPS www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash advice animals forward slash comments forward slash 1kbhcn. Holy shit that is terrifying. My husband does tree removals for a living and is getting his arborist certification. I have no idea what I would do if this happened to him or his crew. Holy shit. Lumberjack is one of the deadlier professions out there. The best thing anyone can ever do for safety is to avoid complacency. Always assume that today is as deadly as the first time you picked up your chainsaw. Geez this whole thread has upsetting stories, this one really annoyed me. A man died just so someone could project their moral superiority. The post the commenter responded to is also dumb as fuck to me, there's literally nothing to be gained from that. Even if the people weaving and speeding aren't in an emergency forward slash need to use the bathroom forward slash whatever and are unjustifiably speeding, going out of your way to spite people seems so petty. Everyone does some small thing that is wrong, legally or morally, and if we all chose to be petty and go out of our way to harm others, the world would be blind and toothless. I had a dude nearly kill me break checking me on the freeway because I came up behind him too fast for his liking. I only came up fast because someone in front of him slowed down before they got into an exit lane and he didn't break, he just coasted to slow down. Which was perfectly acceptable I just wasn't expecting it. I even got over to the right the first time he brake checked me. He assumed I was going to go around the left side so he stayed in the wrong lane to block me more. So then swerved around someone to get back in front of me and do it again and was smiling at me in his mirror. It's wild how much people take everything to be about them. The way I look at it, if someone is driving like a lunatic, there's two likely scenarios. 1. They're in an emergency, just like in the story, and you should immediately let them pass. 2. They are a lunatic controlling a massive hunk of metal at high speeds, and you should immediately let them pass. The insurance adjuster who gives really really good tips about filing for claims. It's usually linked in every house flood forward slash fire post we see. I don't have the link but someone does I'm sure. Edit, this is the comment. HTTPS www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash pair solfius forward slash comments forward slash 43 IYIP. Moral of the story go through your house and document every single thing you have in there just in case you have to make a claim. Do the grudge work while you can still take the photos. I was thinking this while reading it, I saw a while ago someone advised at least going through your house and taking a video of everything. It's easier than taking still images of hundreds or thousands of things and of the worst happens, you at least have video evidence of what you had. And could take still images from that. It what the regulations are with what you can submit. But yeah, keep track of your shit. There was this story about a girl that was kidnapped as a child. And she was saved by some random guy in a stairwell who absolutely kicked the kidnapper's ass. She was saved just because one dude had the social awareness to notice that something was wrong. I need to read it again but can't seem to find it sadly. Edit, thanks to you forward slash me the story was found here. Hey I'm the op of the mentioned reddit post. Sorry I don't use reddit much so sorry if I say the wrong things or whatever. I recently have been getting a ton of messages and questions so I guess I'll answer them here if that's okay. When I posted the story of what happened to me around a week or two later someone claimed to know the cigarette guy a few days later it was confirmed to be him and we exchanged information and talked on the phone. I posted a few updates but I guess it broke the rules of the subreddit so it was deleted. Since then I didn't post much updates because I'm not sure what is orist against the rules and I'm not sure what people are curious to know about the situation. I think this is what you are talking about which is so strange because I just heard this story today on a YouTube channel. 
https www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash let's not meet forward slash comments forward slash da3 ivo wow and if you read her updates she actually found the guy who saved her because someone who read her story on reddit knew him that's nuts this one is extremely disturbing but it was a post from a man looking for advice on leaving his wife not too long after he posted an update that his wife murdered their children. You forward slash Jason in hell. The original post and account were deleted. And if anyone should doubt that it was real, because a story like that certainly sounds like it could be a troll, he linked to news stories that matched up with his original post. Just incredibly tragic. I forget what it's called, but there is a thread where a guy makes an account just to roast the people on our forward slash grilled cheese and how most of the things that they post are in fact melts. He then tells his life story about how he's been eating grilled cheeses 40 plus years and that the thread was in fact a disgrace. Not the same one, but another great post about grilled cheese, https www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash credit forward slash comments forward slash itkz9f. This woman goes to order a grilled cheese at a hospital cafeteria and the cook has no idea what she's talking about. Tries making it on a hamburger bun. Damn this reminds me of when I first came to the US. British but I don't think my accent is that strong. Went bowling with the future I laws and was hungry, went to get some food. Menu has a burger at the top so when the lady gets to me and asks what I want, I respond like any human with I'd like a burger please. She looked at me in confusion. A what? I look at the menu, sure enough first item is a burger. Look back. I'd like a burger. With a look of supreme boredom and confidence she responds oh, we don't do those. I look at the menu. Look back at her. Menu. Her. A hamburger. First thing on the menu. Oh sure. Goes to make it. I have absolutely no idea what she thought I said, and have no idea how someone can have the utmost confidence to apparently mishear me twice, and decide I was clearly asking for something that did not exist. Edit, I'm enjoying all of these replies, and the attempts to transcribe British accents is amusing and pretty on point. This was in the Midwest, as some have guessed, and I have found that sometimes I genuinely have to put on a cowboy accent to be understood. Hey I was 21 at the time and I'm 27 now. I'm old but not that old. Well my dude it seems like you succeeded. I checked forward slash r forward slash grilled cheese and for at least the first two pages there are no melts in sight. I think the guy documenting his spiraling into a full-blown heroin addiction was one of the most disturbing and impressive things I read here. I forgot the name of the account unfortunately. I found it. He did a bunch of armors. The last is four years ago. Hope he's doing well. You forward slash spontaneous H. Oh god I forgot about this. That was a heartbreaking one for sure. Didn't it start with him using once for research or something like that? I think it started with him just trying out of curiosity or something. And yes, it was heartbreaking to read. He says in his final update that he downplayed his substance use in his original thread. He was in denial about his alcohol and weed dependence. He says that had his life been going better he never would have tried H at all. I think that is the real takeaway from all of this. If you need help, please get it. Don't self-medicate, no matter how strong you think you are. That should be read in school's IMO. Way more effective than whatever they're doing right now. Every time I even think about how do hard drugs feel I go back and read his posts. I get addicted to anything that makes me feel good very fast and trying even coke would 100% ruin my life. Help Reddit turned Spanish and I cannot undo it. HTTPS www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash ask Reddit forward slash comments forward slash CQ1Q2. The community got together and decided to troll op. It was awesome. The problema. Comment gets me every time. Also. That's the first time I've seen a timestamp on a thread say one decade ago. Damn. I went back to check and it says 11y on mobile, forward slash. This was the greatest thing ever. Even the admins participated in the trolling. HTTPS www.reddit.com forward slash r forward slash confessions forward slash comments forward slash c93egn. Every now and then something will remind me of this and I'll read it again. Truly crazy story. 
Jesus, that's nuts. If anybody is curious where stories of Dumwak possession come from, now you know. This and also, in some cases, scientists have more recently found that people actually have a brain infection when they suddenly act like they are possessed. Brain inflammation can cause severe psychosis. When the person recovers from the illness they are back to their normal selves. A reporter wrote about her experience in the article, Brain on Fire. Below is a summary. In 2009, Susanna Kahala was a healthy 24-year-old reporter for the New York Post, when she began to experience numbness, paranoia, sensitivity to light and erratic behavior. Grasping for an answer, Kahala asked herself as it was happening, am I just bad at my job, is that why? Is the pressure of it getting to me? Is it a new relationship? But Kahala only got worse, she began to experience seizures, hallucinations, increasingly psychotic behavior and even catatonia. Her symptoms frightened family members and baffled a series of doctors. After a month-long hospital stay and $1 million worth of blood tests and brain scans that proved inconclusive, Kahala was seen by drive. Sue Hellager, who asked her to draw a clock on a piece of paper. I drew a circle, and I drew the numbers 1 to 12 all on the right-hand side of the clock, so the left-hand side was blank, completely blank, she tells Fresh Air's Dave Davies, which showed him that I was experiencing left-side spatial neglect and, likely, the right side of my brain responsible for the left field of vision was inflamed. As Ajja put it to her parents, her brain was on fire. This discovery led to her eventual diagnosis and treatment for a TNMDA receptor encephalitis, a rare autoimmune disease that can attack the brain. Kahala says that doctors think the illness may account for cases of Dumwak possession throughout history. Kahala's new memoir is called Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness. It's stories like this this weird and work possession would make it less disturbing. That's crazy. I wonder what happened to the sun. The comments have some pretty good speculations about either being in jail or dead, or worse, 